Coming up, I flop around on top of the engine. Some delicious stuff. Jeez. And transformation of old ugly parts. Welcome back to part 7 of Project Cars Rue. It's been a while since we worked on this car, so it's time for a quick recap. This is a 1988 BMW E32 750iL that I bought in Karlsruhe, where it's been sitting unused for around 5 years. Bro, my friend! Bro! After pushing this 1.8 ton beast out in daylight, it was trailer back to my then tiny shed. We set about reviving it, fuel pumps were serviced, we discovered incorrectly installed fuel filters by the previous mechanic, among other things that he messed up, did a service of the engine, oil, filters, ignition systems, etc. Oh, and there it is. And the mighty 12 cylinder engine fired back into life. It's running! You frivolous bastard! You're alive! We then replaced the leaking radiator, Come out. flushed the brake fluid and got it driving as well. It drives, it lives. Performed the compression test which yield good results. We treated it with some lovely Style 4 16 inch wheels. Off to the dumpster. I love it, I really do. I didn't expect it's gonna look this good. We refurbished the brake calipers, replaced the brake pressure accumulator, fixed the gangster lean that the driver's seat had, overhauled the power steam pump, and went for a first drive on the road, which actually went well. I don't know what that is. That is after a second try. Now the time has come to bring this 5 liter M70 V12 engine to a perfect smooth running condition. We are going to do a top end refresh and attack the intake manifold gaskets, valve cover gaskets, banjo bolts, valve stem seals, complete cooling system and also clean. A lot. So let's jump into action. First things first, we need to remove the hood. We're going to be doing a lot of work in the engine bay and this thing is gonna be constantly in our way, so it has to go. Ah, uh, yes. Nearly forgot how filthy all of this is. But say hello to its 12 cylinder majesty. I guess this surgery is gonna start with the 10 mil socket as well. So I'm gonna have the nurse bring in the tool cart. Nurse! Claro que si, sí, senor. Choose your weapon. We need to pull back the hood insulation and then we can disconnect these hoses and these wires. Jeez, this is unbelievable. Five million clips. This was BMW back in the over engineering hood insulation. Finally. Okay, so now we are in the disconnecting business. And that's the wires and stuff free. So I'm gonna remove the shock here as well, and then we're gonna bolt the hood here, complete with the hinge. All right. Brace yourself. There we go. It's not that heavy. Don't scratch the M5. Not that it matters. It's already scratched. Nice. Plenty of space to work in here. And the disassembly begins. Now the fan clutch. Gonna remove the throttle body. Now we're going to drain the coolant. So there's a peacock on the bottom of the radiator. And we gotta let it pee now. Where's the peacock though? We have zero spill policy in this shop. Except when we don't. Gonna get this sweater stripping out of the way. Now the expansion tank. What was that? Oh, it's my socket. Don't die, <laughs> it's on the bottom.
Now I'm going to start unhooking the wiring harness so we can lift it up. Then we can remove the fuel injectors and access nuts for the intake manifolds. Remove this hose. There are four connectors up front. Two of them are cylinder identification sensors, aka donut sensors, that go to ignition wires number 6 and 12. The other two, they are crankshaft position sensors located on the crank pulley. So we're going to label them and then remove them because if we mix them up, then we can have some issues. The problem with these old connectors, all of these wires are so brittle. And if one of them breaks, I'm going to be chasing electrical issues for the next 10 years. It would be nice if we can tie it like that. So I have an idea. Let's see if that's going to work. Open the sunroof. Then we hook the bungee rope here. Lift that up. Perfect, that should do it. Disconnect the two fuel lines on the back. It's incredible when you compare this 12 cylinder engine to the 10 cylinder engine in the M5 or even the Alpina engine. There's just, well, less crap in the engine bay than in those cars. Less connectors, less wires, less hoses, less stuff. It's just so easy to work on. Pull out the injectors. Here you can see the nuts that hold the intake manifold in place. So we just need a good long wobbly extension and we can remove them all. I'm using my magnetic socket, just the normal 10 mil socket stuffed with small magnets inside. And that way I can't drop and lose nuts and bolts. So this one can come out now. No. The valley pan gasket has failed. Oh, there you go. There you go. I have my proof that the valve stem seals are bad. Okay, I'm planning to explain to you later why we're gonna replace the valve stem seals, but now I just have the proof that they are indeed absolutely shot. This is a closed intake valve on cylinder number three, and you can see oil pulled up in there, which is a definitive answer that the valve stem seals are bad. They are letting oil pass, and in this particular case, it's ending up on the top of the valve because it's closed. But for example, here where it's open, then it just goes straight into the combustion chamber and you get blue smoke out of the exhaust until all of this burns off. And you can also see that the valley pan gasket failed, so we have leaking coolant here as well. I'm going to remove the famous intake manifold gaskets. Time for a bit of vacuuming. Now some bog roll. Before I pop the valve covers off, we're gonna take this party downstairs. We're gonna drain the oil and drop the oil pan. I wanna make sure there's nothing alarming in there, like plastic or whatever. If there is, then I know that this engine needs to be taken apart further. But if everything looks good, then we're gonna come back up top and proceed with the replacement of the valve stem seals. Okay, it's out. Chain is good, not loose. A bit warnishy, but overall not too bad for an old engine. Let's check the oil pan. Let's see, are we gonna win some prizes here? Not sludge, yeah, just sludgy. No plastic or anything that shouldn't be in here. Yeah, just sludge. Okay, good. So we're gonna leave that on the side and go back up top. Now we're going to remove the ignition wires. There's a crispy wire in the back. Banjo bolts, all in place. Finger test. All right, all the cams are good. So here's how the top of the engine looks like. Overall, pretty decent. I mean, I've seen cleaner, but not bad at all. No loose banjo bolts. 
That's nice. All right, camshafts, good. Before we go any further, we gotta deal with this bunch here. These are steel valve covers and steel oil pan, and they're looking very ugly, rusty and dirty, so we can't put them back on the car like this. So I'm gonna put them into my vapor blasting cabinet, clean them up, remove the rust, remove the paint, and then I'm gonna take them for powder coating. I'm thinking silver, that's close to what it was from the factory. We gotta paint them or powder coat them, otherwise they're gonna rust super quickly. But the intake manifolds, they are aluminum, so after a blast in the vapor blasting cabinet, these are gonna look spectacular. But now we're gonna start stripping these down and start blasting. Okay, we gotta make this a little bit cleaner. I don't wanna make a mess in the cabinet. Now we're gonna step into my Aquablast 1215 cabinet from Vixen Surface Treatments. And you saw me using this in the previous episode on Project Raleigh. All of the parts turned out spectacular. And now we're gonna use it on Project Cars Rue. I love this thing. Pop that in. Start with the small part. Instant gratification. That one is done. Goodbye, Rust. Done. Now the valve covers, these are actually more difficult to blast than the oil pan because we have this oil separation thing here and I really don't want any blasting media in there because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to wash all of that out. And if some of that stays in there and then it dislodges later in the engine, boy that's going to be really bad. So I plugged it up on this side and used water resistant tape on this side and then I'm not going to blast here at all, just this surface and hopefully that should do it. I am also going to wash the crap out of this once we are done. All right, that turned out pretty good. Just finished blasting all of these parts and they look fantastic. But this took a very long time, primarily because I had to rinse them out, to dry them out, blow them out 15 million times. I have to be sure that all of the media is out. So now I have to drop this off with the powder coater. He's gonna powder coat this to silver, gray, whatever he has. And then once it comes back, I'm gonna do another round of cleaning, dump them into a water tank, use oil, compressed air, brake cleaner, just everything to make sure this is 151% free of any blasting media. The guy is quick, really quick. Less than a day and everything is done. Looks really good. I like the color. This is gonna blend in perfectly with the rest of the car. Now we're gonna put back the oil pan because I don't wanna leave the engine open for longer than it needs to be. Obviously all of the dust and crap, so I just wanna close it. And then obviously later we're gonna do the valve covers. Turn the brightness down, that's shiny. New O-ring for the oil level sensor. So this thing uses the ever so crappy cork gasket. Still waiting for someone to come up with the rubber one. In the meantime, we gotta use this. And as you can imagine, it's very difficult to keep it in place. So we're gonna deploy zip ties. Thin ones will do. And that's ready to go back on the car. The zip tie trick is ingenious. So ideally you need three hands for this job. So normally I would use thread sealer on these bolts so they don't leak through the threads, but I think we're gonna be back in here in the next episode because we're gonna do the front suspension, engine mounts, and probably the upper oil pan gasket. It's not leaking, but I'm thinking if I'm gonna do the engine mounts and the steering box, we might as well do that. So cut the zip ties, pull them out. By hand, no power tools to start them. So just gently get them in there and then final torque by hand. So 
So now I'm going to go around by hand and give him a nice snug. The torque is 10 Nm, but in past, I didn't like to use the torque wrench because it felt like I was really torquing them on. And these don't need a lot of torque to seal, so I feel safer going by hand. That's it. And that's looking very spiffy. All right, time to do valve stem seals. And now I'm gonna give you a bit of a background as to why we're doing that. I noticed whenever this car sits for a while, couple of days, week, doesn't really matter, you start it cold and for the first five to 10 seconds, there's blue smoke coming out of the exhaust. Blue smoke means it's burning oil and that's no bueno. On this engine, it can typically be caused by three things. The first one, if you're really lucky, it's gonna be the easy one bad PCV oil separation thing. I already replaced that, it didn't help. Second is worn valve stem seals. And third, if you're really unlucky, it's gonna be bad piston rings. They're not sealing properly when the engine is cold, oil is going past them and it's just smoking until everything is nice and warm. The piston ring has expanded and then it's sealing again. My bet on this particular engine is that we have an issue, I already know, with the valve stem seals. And I got my proof when I removed the intake manifolds the intake valve on cylinder number three was closed and it's swimming in oil. That means that the stem is not sealing, oil is leaking past it, going down into the combustion chamber. You start the car and it's smoking until it burns off all of that oil. It could be that the valve guides are also worn, but this car supposedly has 142,000 kilometers, which is not a lot. And if that's the case, then it's highly unlikely that they're bad. I actually already did one cylinder and valve stem seals. They're no longer rubber. They're just solid plastic. So they're definitely bad. Thankfully on this engine, you can replace them without removing the heads, which is what we're going to do. And I know some of you are going to ask me, why don't you just remove the heads and refurbish them completely? And there are a few reasons why I don't want to do that. Namely, this engine is still working good, apart that smoking thing, which is only when it's cold but the compression is good, the head gaskets are good, it's not overheating or anything like that. So I can spend a ton of time and money refurbishing the heads, put everything back together, and then it turns out we still have the same issue. That means that the piston rings are indeed bad as well, and that this engine needs a bottom rebuild too. And rebuilding this engine completely, it's actually quite difficult because many of the parts are no longer available, like piston rings, that's gone. Rod bearings, I think as well, or maybe not, they're just absurdly expensive. But many of the small parts that you need to rebuild this engine, they're either no longer available or just stupid expensive. So I don't wanna tear down a good working engine chasing this issue when I know that the seals are bad and hopefully that fixes our issue. If not, well, then we're gonna scratch our head when the time comes. So there are two methods going about this. The first method is using a rope so you remove the rocker arm, you feed the rope into the combustion chamber, and then you crank the engine over and the piston is gonna push the rope up against the head and that's gonna hold the valves in place and you can replace the seals. The second method is using compressed air. You get the piston to its highest position and then you put about five, six bar of pressure in there and that's gonna hold the valve in place and you can replace the seals. As I said, I already did one cylinder off camera just to see what works the best, what's the easiest method. I started off with the rope method and that does work. I managed to replace the seal on the intake side. It held the valve firmly in place, but on the exhaust side, I couldn't get enough rope in there to hold the valve firmly in place. That's when I switched to the compressed air method. And I gotta say that works better, easier, cleaner. So that's the method that we're going to use. And now we're gonna do everything step by step. But first, let me show you all of the tools that we need to use. This is pretty much everything that we need for this job. This is the rope. You gotta make sure you use a red one. If you use any other color, your engine might explode. So keep that in mind. This is a plastic PVC pipe. Makes it really easy to feed the rope in the cylinder. These are the spring compressors that I got on eBay. Really cheap, but they get the job done. Reason I got two is, depending if you're working on exhaust or intake, you need to have this set differently. I'll explain everything as we go, but let's start because there's 24 of these bastards. Before we start working in here, it's important to plug these holes here with paper towels or something. Otherwise, if you drop something, it's gonna go straight into the oil pan. So this is the cylinder that I already done, cylinder number three. Now we're gonna do cylinder number two. These are the rocker arms that we need to remove. Then we have thrust adapter, spring retainer, and spring. And once we remove all of that, then we can get to the seals. So first we're gonna put the camera into the cylinder so we can see where the piston is, pretty much all the way down. So I'm gonna rotate it a little bit more so that the cams are pointing up. And then we can remove the rocker arms. 
And that cylinder is full with oil. So now I'm going to put a dot on the thrust adapter here so I know in which direction it goes back in. And now we can start removing rocker arms. So get the hooks around the cam and then lower this thing onto the spring like that. So now you can see the tool in place. The hooks are hooked around the cam and then with the other end we push the tool down and this is going to compress the spring and allow us to remove the rocker arm. Like that. Pop it up. And that's out. Slowly release the tension. Get the tool out so we can remove the thrust adapter as well. So use a magnet. Now we're going to remove the rocker arm for the exhaust valve. Compress it. Make sure to keep and put everything back in its original position. With the piston still being down, now we're going to use a socket and give the spring a good whack just to loosen things up. So now you're going to turn the engine over and get the piston at TDC. You'll know it's at TDC when both cam lobes are pointing up. And the next step is crucial. Since we're using compressed air, we need to block the crank from spinning in any direction. All of the spark plugs are out. There's no compression. So once you put air pressure into that cylinder, it can actually push that piston down. And if that were to happen, that valve is going to drop in and we'll never be able to get it back. We're going to have to remove the heads to finish the job. Another reason why we brought the piston at TDC is if the line were to fail or whatever and that valve drops in, it's not going to go all the way in. It's going to hit the top of the piston and we can still pull it up with the magnet or hand or whatever. Now I'm going to set my breaker bar and block the engine. So here's how that looks like big breaker bar on the crank bolt and then jam between the frame rail and the lift and then blocks and stuff so that can't move at all. Since we're going to start swinging tools around here, I like to put a bit of tape around the cams. That way, if anything slips, it won't scratch the cams and it's easy enough to remove later. Now we need to get our special tool in place. So give it a tiny twist, not a lot. The O-ring is going to seal. So I've set my compressor to about 5 bar, which is plenty. I mean, you can do 10, but that's just an overkill. Around 5 bar, it's perfect to hold the valves in place. And that's the air going into the cylinder. So now we need to compress the spring and then remove valve keepers or valve collet. Colette, I like that name. She's French and a bit stubborn. That's uno and zwei. And slowly release the tension. And get the tool out. Here's the spring retainer and then two springs. Again, very important to keep the orientation of everything. And now we have a nice view at the valve and the seal. So now it's the a bit tricky part. We get our special pliers and you don't want to squeeze too much, but at the same time you want to grab it firmly and pull it firmly. Twist and pull. You probably can't see anything, but there it is. That's off. I like to pull the spring pocket out as well so I can clean everything. A little bit of rubber stayed at the bottom and we got to clean that. So I'm going to get tweezers. There it is. Hopefully you can see that, but we need to make sure that doesn't stay in there. So before we get the new one in, a bit of brake clean on the Q-tip and just clean. Clean the spring pocket, put it back in oil, then the little condom so we don't tear the new seal and now the new seal 
get it in by hand. Now we can use our special tool to smack it into place. You can also use a socket, but I bought a toolkit that comes with all of this stuff. So lightly tap it in place until you hear the sound change. Fully seated. Pull the condom out. So now we're gonna put assembly lube here. And that's so that the valve keepers stick to it easier. Back goes springs, retainer. So I put assembly lube on valve keepers so I can grab it with the screwdriver like this and put it in place. Or you can use tweezer, pliers, whatever works for you the best. So ideally this is a two man job because you have to keep the tension on the spring. That's one in place. And this is where your muscles start to soar. Go in Colette, go in. I'll buy you a baguette. And that's the Colette back in place. By the end of this job, your biceps, triceps, biceps, gonna be huge. Again, part of it stayed on the bottom. You have to get that out. There it is. Clean time. Condom. Now I'm gonna use just tweezers. Yeah, I think with tweezers, it's gonna be the easiest way to do this. Yep, tweezers for the win. Special V12 tool. So now we can unhook the pressure line. We put the guy that loves to rock back on. So now we're gonna unblock the crank. Remove the tool. Get the camera in there. Now we need to lower the piston, then compress the spring, push the valve down, and then we can reinstall the dude that rocks. You can also remove the lifter, then get the rocker arm in place, and then put back the lifter, whatever is easier for you. There it is. And that's the rock arm back in place. These are the old valve stem seals and they are rock hard. Plastic. No flexibility whatsoever. And here's a nice new one. Soft rubber. So that's why these were leaking. They are just cooked. That took a couple of seconds. Perfect. All right, I'm getting way better at putting back the rock arm in place. Bob's your uncle. That's one more down. Just finished bank one, and I even had time to get a haircut. But anyway, once you get the hang of it, it goes rather easily and quickly. Took me around 30 minutes or so per cylinder, which isn't too bad given how much work we need to do here. But I do have some newish tips for putting the French girl back on valve collapse. I'm using tweezers, only that, grab it, put it back in place, works really easily. I had these for about four years now, never used them before up until now. And for putting the rocker dude back in place, I first installed the thrust adapter. Then I get the spring compressor going and I grab the screwdriver with tape on top of it. And at the same time, I'm compressing the spring and pushing the valve all the way down. Once it's all the way down, it's super easy to sneak the rock guy underneath the camshaft and set it in place. So that's about it. Not too complicated, just tedious. And this was the easy side. Now we got to do the more difficult one. There's more crap in the way over there. So let's go. Oh, there we are.
See? Couple of seconds. We unlocked the final level. Cylinder number 12. Yes, we are finished. Done, finito, fertig. Took me about a day, day and a half, but I also had to film and whatnot, so not too bad. Just to recap quickly, all of these bastards are shot, which after 34 years of use comes as no surprise. They are just solid plastic and they were definitely not sealing properly. Hopefully this fixes our blue smoke issue, but we'll find out soon enough. I also wanna mention that if you're planning on doing this job, I highly recommend that you go with compressed air method. It's so much faster, easier, and cleaner. And I also got this kit from eBay, just a generic random one, really cheap as well. And it comes with these pliers, which are really good for pulling the seal off. And then these tools to knock it back in place. So get yourself this. And this is definitely something that's doable in your garage, driveway, street, whatever. It's just tedious and time consuming. But other than that, not too horrible. Before we start putting valve covers back on, I want to quickly verify the timing of this engine. And to do so, I have these two special tools to lock the cams. And now I'm going to rotate the engine until the mark on the crank pulley lines up with the one on the timing cover. That means that the engine is a TDC. And then I can slide these tools onto each cam and see if the timing is off or correct. The angle is not very good, but those two marks are lined up. On bank one, this is the slot where the tool goes on. And on bank two, it goes here. And looks like the timing is off. Bank one. Let's see bank two. And it looks like it's sliding off here as well. All right, we need to adjust cam timing. So I retimed bank two and the tool is sitting perfectly flush now. Now we're gonna do bank one and it's actually not that complicated. There are six bolts holding the cam sprocket and you can only loosen three of them with one full rotation. So now we're gonna mark them, loosen them, rotate the crank and then loosen the other three. These are the three that we can access. So now I'm gonna mark them. And undo them. Okay, that's good. Now you're gonna remove the tool. So now you're gonna do one full rotation. And right before the marks start lining up, we are going to stop and then get the tool back on like that. And now we're gonna rotate the crank until the tool is sitting flush. There you have it. Now the tool is sitting flush. So now I'm gonna mark the remaining three. And loosen them. Now we're gonna rotate the cam anti-clockwise until the bolts come pretty much to the end of their slots. You can see next to that bolt, there's a hole where the bolt can slide left and right. So rotate the crank and watch the sprocket. Perfect. And now you can see that the timing mark is off. So now we're gonna rotate clockwise until that lines up. So slowly. Perfect. The tool is still sitting flush and now we can tighten the bolts. The three that we can reach, that is. Don't need to go crazy, just tight. Now you're gonna remove the tool and do one full rotation. Get the tool back on, sitting flush. Do the other one as well, sitting flush as well. The crank is lined up and now we can tighten the remaining three bolts. Do one rotation, verify that the timing is still correct, then do another one and verify again. And after that, we are sure that the timing is set properly. Here's bank one, tool sitting flush on both sides. 
bank DOS, tool setting flush on both sides as well. And that's double yes. And with that, the timing is set properly. Next up, we have oil sprayer bars and notorious banjo bolts. This is the oil sprayer bar that sits on top of the camshaft like this. There are small pinholes here, here, and all over the pipe. The oil comes in from underneath, the banjo bolt sits here and distributes that oil through the pipe and then it's peeing onto the camshaft lobes through those small holes. What happens over time, these bolts were not secured properly from the factory and they tend to back out. And when that happens and you have a loose banjo bolt, you can see where the hole in the banjo bolt is, you're going to lose lubrication for your camshafts and of course the camshaft is going to wear. Sometimes this is so bad these completely drop out of place. So to stop that from happening, we're gonna use these locking tabs from extraclassics.de. I bought more parts from them, which I'm gonna show you later. And as a final overkill, we can also use a bit of thread locker. I mean, you don't have to if you're using locking tabs, but with all of this in place, there's no chance any of this is ever gonna come out on its own. And this is something you have to do on every single M70 engine, because it's a very known problem. And if you're not sure if it's been done on your engine, just go ahead and open it up and do this because this is a lot cheaper and easier to do than to replace the entire camshaft. First up, we're gonna clean the holes. I also thoroughly cleaned the pipe and the banjo bolts. You gotta make sure all of that is not clogged or anything like that. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of thread locker. As I said, it's not really necessary, but a little bit, it's not gonna hurt anything. And obviously you gotta make sure that you turn it the right way around. So now you just need to bend the tabs. And with that, these bolts ain't going anywhere. This is a permanent solution to this problem because even if these bolts were to become loose over time, they can't physically come out. You have these tabs here that are bent up against the bolt. And then you have these tabs here that are gonna catch on the pipe if this whole thing tries to turn. So they just, they can't come out, which is a brilliant and simple solution. The valve covers are finally ready. I spent, and I'm not kidding, four hours prepping them. They were really bad on the inside, so I had to blast out two and then spend several hours making sure they're squeaky clean. I used a water hose, water tank, compressed air, brake cleaner, fogging oil for men, dry them, and then repeat that process five million times until I'm absolutely certain there's no media left inside. And now it's cleaner than my soul. It's swimming in fogging oil for men, so we can install a brand new gasket. Now we're gonna prep the surface. Now we're gonna add a bit of sealant where the covers meet the head. Here, and there, on the back as well. Bit of sauce for the cams. Superb, brand new oil cap. Time for new spark plugs. Moving on. Now we're gonna focus on the cooling system. I wanna replace the water pump, valley pan gasket, and all of the hoses. So everything in front of the engine needs to be removed. Now the belt. Okay, now the water pump pulley. So in order to get to the water pump bolts, we have to remove the crank pulley. <sighs> Bit of pry bar action. There it is. Vibration dumpner. Now we're gonna unbolt the water pump. I made a template from the new water pump because the water pump bolts are different length. So we're just gonna poke holes and that way we know which one goes where. This pipe is in the way. Put that on the side. 
There are three threaded holes on the water pump where you can put an M5 bolt. And as you thread it in, it's going to come out on the other side and it's going to push the water pump away from the block. And that way you can remove it easier. I had a ton of these bolts, but apparently now I only have one. And I'm not in the mood to go to the software store, so I'm just going to alternate this one. And then we're going to have to pry here as well, because you have to break this seal where these two pipes connect. And protect the radiator with something too. I can see the water pump starting to separate. Protection for the radiator. <sighs> that went splendid right into the coolant. Oh, that's exquisite. I should patent this. First class protection. Ooh, not budging whatsoever. I borrowed some M5 bolts from my neighbor. Oh, that's working brilliantly. There it is. <laughs> Stop resisting. As you can see, this is, as you can see, this is very easy. Oh, yeah. Finally. Ugly. Now we're gonna remove these two coolant pipes. Oh my, that one is really in. Okay, then let's start with the easy one. Ouch. Oh man, this one is clipped in. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That is out. All right, the pipe is utterly disgusting, but it's salvageable. So I'm gonna close one end and then fill it up with a vapor rust. Let that cook for a while, and then we're gonna blast it in the cabinet. Before we start removing the valley pan cover, we gotta clean this up first. Jeez. The previous guy that installed intake manifold bolts used so much grease here, this is unbelievable. One side done, that took absolutely ages, but it looks nice, doesn't it? That's as clean as it's going to get at this point. Now we can start removing the cover. Now this can go either really well or really bad. These bolts are known for corroding and snapping when you try to undo them. So we're gonna go slow, tap them with the hammer, and hopefully all of them come out in one piece. Because if one of them snaps, oh, it's gonna be a really bad day. We're gonna give them a few love taps. There's one. You gotta work the bolt back and forth. Thankfully, all of them are out in one piece. So now we're gonna pry our prize. No. Hello. All right, we're gonna leave this alone for now because it's time to clean the parts. Now we're gonna go ahead and blast these disgusting parts, especially this one. Just like that, brand new. I love this thing. This is the most satisfying part.
Mann. I quickly spruced up the water pump pulley with some high temperature black paint. Looks lovely. Now I need to start cleaning this stuff up here in preparation for the new gasket. Oh, now we need to remove the old gasket. It stinks as well. Old shitty cork gasket. That's what's left of it. So the ceiling surface is looking really bad. That's now, well, I don't want to say nice and clean, but it's as clean as I can get it. So we have a brand new gasket, bolts, and washers. Since the mating surface on the block and the cover is in pretty rough shape, I'm going to use a thin layer of Rhinestone seal. I'm not entirely sure that the gasket will seal, and this is not something I want to do twice because it's a ton of work. And when I apply a thin layer, I know it's not going to leak 100%. Perfect. Normally I wouldn't use sealant, but trust me, this is one of those things you don't want to do twice. This is also going to help you keep the gasket in place. It looks great, especially when you compare it to what it was before. Now we're going to replace this coolant hose which seems impossible because there's one clamp that you can't even access. Yeah, good stuff, BMW. good stuff. It's gonna take me three years to undo this clamp. That's the clamp, lovely tucked in right next to the firewall. I think I have a solution to this problem. Yeah, there you go. All they had to do was position the clamp this way. Yeah, good luck pulling that off. <sighs> I can't wait to break something. It's getting serious. I can't see. You gotta. Oh, if something breaks over there, I'm gonna regret removing this hose. Come on, you're so close. The stupid clamp. Well, of course. Ooh. That bastard is out. Here's the new one. See, it's beefier here now. <laughs> I don't know if that's fully seated. Scheiße, man! No! All right. That's in. We're at the point where we should be putting everything else back together, but we have some nice and shiny stuff in here. The intake manifolds are also going to be shiny, and then you have the rest of the engine bay that looks like crap. So that's the part that we need to take care of now. We need to clean the engine bay. And I'm not gonna go for a showroom squeaky clean finish, but this needs to be a lot more cleaner and presentable, get rid of this dust and grime. So that's what we're gonna do now. This is by far my least favorite part, but it needs to be done. So let me show you my arsenal. All purpose cleaner, brake cleaner, carbon fiber towels, brushes, compressed air, and I also got a small steamer. So time to make this engine bay nice and tidy. First, vacuuming. So now you're gonna pre-soak everything.
And there you have it, nothing special, just a bit cleaner. And this is a particularly difficult engine bay to detail because from the factory, this entire engine bay was covered in wax or Cosmo line, whatever yellowish stuff is, and it's very difficult to remove. All of the metal plastic, this entire front end was covered in it, so I had to polish it by hand to make it nice and shiny. But you can still see it, like in some places where I can't get to it. The plastic as well, you would have to use some chemicals and stuff, but then you can damage the plastic or the paint, and I didn't want to do that. So, And as we put everything back together, all of the parts are going to go in nice and clean, and I think the end result will look rather nice. Happy with that. This is where we're going to park this episode. The next step is reassembly and getting the engine running again. So stay tuned for a lot more cleaning, fulfilling before and after shots, and hearing this 12-cylinder engine fire in symphony. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.